must I must center myself. I said before I was I was disappointed in this movie. I forgot how far disappointed I was in this. I said I was gonna review this towards after I, when I reviewed the 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 sequel. I reviewed the sequel, but I said I would review the first one in the year 2020. Like I said, so I'm getting so I'm keeping that promise on that. I didn't want to rewatch this again because, like I said, I was so so disappointed in this. Just wait, wait. This is why this is why the sequel is better. That's why that's why the secret the sequel to me is better. I have to revisit the the. the I was yeah. I'm sorry. As I'm a fan, as a I grew up as a, I grew up a fan as a fan of Godzilla. I had to rewatch this piece of sh shit. Yes, I guess I'll say I, as this piece of shit. I would say I'm sorry. This is a film. I was back in back then we were making. We were gonna make this film. I saw the teaser for when I first saw the teaser to this film. I was excited for. I was really looking forward to this. As a fan of Godzilla, I was looking forward to this. I liked the trailers to him. It looked like it was it was gonna hold it was gonna hold um, promising. And I wanted to like this film so bad. Why I wanted to see this. I was so excited to see this. And you know what? The first time, the first showing, I saw this. I saw this on opening night. I was excited for right. I liked it, but but then um, by the time this came out on DVD, rewatching it a second time, I was like, wow. I just completely lied to myself. I don't know. I don't know. It's possible how I can lie to myself, but I guess it's one of the very few times ever I've ever lied to myself. How boring, how shitty this film was. Like I said, I guess I was lying to myself because I wanted to like this film so badly. Because as a fan, as a fan of Godzilla, and now I was, I was, and now I'm, a, I'm offended by this. This is why. As people, this film, okay. They say they wanted to do a, like a take on the original. Here's the original, classic, a classic masterpiece, for back in the day, creating one of the most classic icons ever in film history. Now. This film gets the pass. Now I don't understand why this one gets the pass from critics. 75% Rotten Tomatoes, 6.4 on IMDb. This gets the pass. Now I'm sorry to say this is this is miles better than this piece of than this boring ass film. This is miles better. I'm sorry. You can disagree with me all you want. But I grew up loving this film. One of my all-time favorite movies. I love this film to death. One of my all-time favorites. Miles better than this piece of trash. Disagree with me all you want. That's fine. That's all. We, that's what we're here for. We're here to agree or disagree. This film was miles better. Because either the cast was better. Godzilla, he's in this more time. has more screen time. This Godzilla more than this one does. And this is a two-hour movie, and so is this. But this is here is much more, much faster paced. Um, the actions I enjoy, the action scenes I enjoyed, the cast I enjoyed. But I enjoyed Matthew Broderick. I enjoyed uh, Jean Renault, Jean Renault, Hank Azaria, Kevin Dunn, even Maria Patello, who I still say one of the issues of the film is is Maria Patello. I still find a, still, still kind of find a better actress though. But even she. I will say I pick better than most of the cast is in this movie. Um, well directed by Roland Emmerich. Um, there are still good, good usages of practical stuff in the movie, and people yeah people still hate the idea of the baby Godzillas. But I that never bothered me growing up. I was so also one of the greatest movie theater experience I had when I was a kid. Still to this day. Um. But even there were, there, but there was still a good use of practical stuff with the baby Godzillas, and there was like a, a little bit with 
with our Godzilla. And I'm sorry, I hate and I and I hate and I, I'm still calling this Godzilla. I hate what people call this this thing, Zilla. You know, take out God, Z take out Zilla. I hate that freaking name. My brother says it all the time because that's what he calls it. Same with his friends. I hate that freaking name. So, this film, yeah, Matthew, and Matthew Broderick is a better is a better lead. People say he's miscast in this. I'm sorry, he's a much better lead than Aaron Taylor Johnson is. He's a much better lead than Aaron Taylor, Aaron, Taylor, Aaron Taylor Johnson is. I love this one to death. I review this, even revisit this twice. Even even to the 2018 for the 20th anniversary for this. So. And then this. I really like I said, I reviewed this. Uh, just, just, like, just towards it for my... Uh, Towards the end of the 2019, this is my this is my top favorites of, of last year. This I got a complete opposite than what I got from this, because yeah, the human cast I thought was much better. I, I like Kyle Chandler, I like Bradley Whitford, Charles Dance for a little bit he had he was good. Um, even even Ken Watanabe, who was uh, Ken Watanabe was in this as well, he was given much better more to do than this film than he did in this. Especially with this uh, great scene where he sacrificed himself to re revive Godzilla. You know, goodbye, old friend. And with that great score by Bear McCree. Yeah, and yet, and yet this film underperformed and got negative reviews from critics. And while this film, yeah, basically, basically critics took a shit on this, but this got the pass. So now, uh, how many minutes? And I'm just now talking about the film. Okay. I will, and the, and the I'll say that. Okay, what the what the what the price I give it? The effects looks pretty good, and I never. And one thing, one thing I always I thought was I never I never mind this look of Godzilla. I thought this Godzilla design looks pretty cool. People say he was always, always say he was fat. He never looked fat to me. I like this. I like this look of Godzilla. He looks pretty. He looks cool. He looks cool. Nice. He's in the effects pretty good. Um, the little piece of music, like the opening by Alexandre Gosplat. I like the opening music. You know, that was a piece of good piece of score from him. But the rest of the score was pretty almost like kind of forgettable. And the best part of the human cast is definitely, but probably, probably a lot of people will agree. Uh, Brian Cranston. I think there was a, it was a, because every people have seen this film right now. We know, we know, we know all about Brian, what happened with Brian Cranston. He was the best, best part of the movie. I think he should, I think he should have stayed as the lead, not Aaron Taylor Johnson. Which he maybe he would have died, and him being the lead. Because how, how it opens it opens up with the credits, you know, what you know the black and white of, of the atomic bombs trying to kill Godzilla. You see Godzilla just when he was about to rise up, then they, before the atomic explosion happens. And that's another thing. This is over a two-hour movie, and if you didn't hear that, I'm cracking my neck because this film is making my neck stiff. This is over a two-over two-hour movie, and Godzilla's only in this for like five minutes at most. In the first what forty? What was it? Thirty to up to forty? No, no, more than thirty. I would say about forty to forty-five minutes. No Godzilla. I don't think they even mention him. They don't. They, if I remember, they don't even mention him. Taught uh, that his name until like later. <laughs> I've I've seen, I've seen most of the Godzilla films. There's still quite a few I've still not yet seen because you know. Over the years, but I've seen most all. I pretty much see about seen about ninety five percent of the Godzilla films. And in which those films are much more shorter movies as well, but those are much more fa faster paced though. And Godzilla had more screen time in any one of those movies than this one. I don't know. This is, a, this is the first Godzilla film I've seen with barely no Godzilla in it when, it, when the film is called Godzilla. Right, okay, but how it opens up? I like the opening. How it opens up because, uh, with Brian Cranston, 
He has he works at the power plant in Japan. Um, his wife and his t- and her team go down. Uh, some is something's uh, askew basically, and something happens like a tremor, but it's really not though, and. And you get this good. I thought this would get this real emotional moment where Brian Cranston, he's forced. To, he sees the the gas coming in. He's forced to to shut the door with his wife and the other mem- crew members in there, and he's forced to watch his wife die in front of him as the door closes. And you get the real good emotional scene, dramatic moment from Brian Cranston. He did a really good job. He did he did a really good job. Probably anybody would say he was the best part of the movie. But he still did a good job, and it's years later, and now this his kid, Ford Brody, because I uh, remember uh, Brent Cranston's name is Joe Brody, because Brody named the Brodies from Jaws. This is what supposed to like a take of what a Jaws and aliens, like hey, you knock up two good movies, but you make a shitty movie. Baron Taylor Johnson, he's in the military, and his wife is played by Elizabeth Olsen. Which importantly, these two worked better. These two, Elizabeth Olsen, funny enough, yeah, these two worked better together when they started an Age of an Avengers: Age of Ultron, and yeah, and that was the only time I uh, I give Aaron Taylor Johnson a pass. I thought he was decent as Quicksilver, and Elizabeth Olsen I liked as uh, Scarlet Witch. But here, but for most I don't besides other than that, other than that, the decent role as Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. I don't care for the or until Johnson anyway. I thought I did not. I do not like Kick Ass. I, I thought he was. I thought he sucked as Kick Ass. And he definitely sucked in this film. And it's kind of funny because you know he's British and all that. But I just treat for him to find it hard to take him seriously trying to carry an American American accent. Uh, but um, but these two I thought I watched better than they did, they did better in Age of Ultron. And this, but Aaron Taylor Johnson is completely sucked ass in this movie. He was a boring lead, wooden. Gary is like bears like no hardly any emotion to him. He just has that most that straight face right there for the most of the entire movie. But uh, he go he goes in because of his to get his father out of custody because he was arrested for snooping around. Because all after all this time he's been obsessed, you know, about what about what happened to his wife, and he's been investigating about what really happened at the plant. You think it wasn't it wasn't just a tremor, an earthquake, something else happened, which we know is when we cut to Ken Watanabe and Sally Hawkins, because her, playing her assist his assistant, because Sally Hawkins, they're both in it until the sequel, and but Sally Hawkins dies and dies by King Ghidorah and, and King of the Monsters. But uh, they find these find this egg and which it, which when it comes to it turns out to be a muto. <laughs> I just want to burp on this movie. Um, and then you know, Brian Cranston is talking with Aaron Taylor Johnson about what happened. There was more to it, you know. So he goes back to where his old house was to retrieve his discs. They get arrested again. They get put into the place where the egg is at. And once again, you get a good performance from Brian Cranston, where he's saying, "You know, he's like, hey, you know, this guy knows. You know what I'm talking about. I'm right. I'm right, aren't I? You know, I. You know, my wife died here. I deserve to know. Whatever it is, it's gonna send us back to the Stone Age. And once again, Brian Cranston, you know, solely on his, his dramatic performance, he did a really good job. And then." The egg hatches, the Muto hatches. Which, first of all, I never care. For, I never care for the the look or how these Mutos are. And which, yeah, and even in King of the Monsters, when um, all the Titans go on a rampage, you know, from because of King Ghidorah, you do see another Muto there. So, but here there are two. So I guess somewhere a part of the world there was another Muto egg in this film, which you see at the end of the movie bowing down to Godzilla. So, but you do see that though. But you see only like about thirty seconds, though. So, but here there there were, there were lame villains and lame monsters in this movie. I never care for the look and design of it in any way. But anyway, and of course you get the stupidest, of course the stupid scene where, um, where Brian Cranston 
Because he's, he's, on, he's on the catwalk, right, or the bridge. He calls out to his son, and then the, the, the thing collapses with him on top of it, and he gets crushed, but they get him out there, and he gets onto the helicopter. And then the Muto escapes, and then tells his son to love him, and then he dies. And then I was impressed, and I said this before, because, you know, it was, I it was completely stupid to kill off Brian Krenzy gets killed way too early. The guy who was the best char the best character who had emotion and more stuff, you know, he was talking about all the stuff that happened and he gets killed. And like, he he dies before Godzilla enters the picture. He his character never got to see Godzilla. That would have been cool, you know, to see, oh, the reason, oh, for all this, you know, not, not because of the Muto, but also this other big creature that also was also in the ocean. Brian Cranston never got to see Godzilla. Never, he dies before he comes in the picture. It was stupid to kill his character. I wish, I wish it was Eric Taylor Johnson's character that got killed, and that would give um, Brian Cranston's, you know, more emotional to it now. If we first he lost his wife, oh, then he maybe he lost his son now. So now he is more determined than ever to see well, well to stop these creatures, you know, the Muto, basically, because Ken Watanabe he already knows that Godzilla already exists, and he says oh, he wants to he's here to bring balance, and he's he's on our, he's on the good side. Now we all know, okay, just be, just be just be reasonable, okay. We know from the old Godzilla movies, he's most, he's more of the good guy, right? We all know that. He's the hero. But in this, they're trying to be more realistic. They're trying to be more like, okay, he's automatically a good guy. But if you want to be realistic in this, how do they know that he was good and how he will bring balance? Do they not, how do they not know that he will be good? Not How will they not know if, he'll, not if he just takes care of the Mutos? How will they know that he will not turn and go and destroy the rest of the world after he's taken care of the Mutos? I mean, I like Ken Wanabi though, because it was and not like that because he gave much better, although he gave much better performance in the sequel though. But I would say, but how does he know that though? Will he actually bring bring balance? And how does he know that he's a good guy? He's actually good. He's on our side. How does he know? How does he know that he'll just go? Not only does he finish the kills the Mutos, that he'll just go and turn around, just go and just go and destroy the rest of the world. I don't get that though, but. I mean, I like I like Ken Wanabe, but here, like I said, I like I like the fact that secretly he was the secretly he was given more to do, especially with his sacrifice. And you see him talking with David Strathern, which he will later uh, come back in the sequel, but very little though in the sequel though. David Strathern, I, mean, I you know if he was in River Wild, he's been in uh, many movies. David Strathern, I like I like a couple of some of the Born the Born movies as well. Um, so after Brian stupidly dies early, then when they finally mention Godzilla, but when they're in a meeting, because this is hardly like over or like forty-five minutes of the movie, there's no Godzilla until they brought his name up in the meeting, showing footage. Yeah, the film is called Godzilla, but there's barely no Godzilla in it. And then when the, and then the time when it comes when it's in Hawaii because um the Mutos you know they're actually all this nuclear stuff right and when the time it gets to Hawaii there's a tidal wave and when in like seeing the trailers like shoe flares he's moving in and he gets to the airport when you see him put his foot down and this is a part I was I was excited about and when he makes his big dramatic back on the big screen right. His, his roar, which I enjoy, I like that roar, you know, a little updated version of the roar. I do like that, though. Nothing else to the classic roar, though, but still. And then it just freaking just cuts away. It cuts away before the battle starts. And if it does, it only lasts about, like, about 20 seconds when Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen, their kid, is seeing it on TV. And if you barely see it for, like, 20 seconds, then it ends when it goes, it'll go back in the ocean. Really? So it's just the first time, first time this big, big fight, and just freaking just cuts away, and it doesn't do it the first time. 
It does it a second time when they're in San Francisco when Elizabeth Olsen, because she's a, she works as a nurse or doctor, and when they're being when the town when the city's being evacuated, they go into these uh, tunnels, and when the door closes, as the doors are closing, the Godzilla's about to ready to fight the Muto again, and the door closes before it begins. Son of a god dang. Criminy, you know? I've never seen a Godzilla movie ever where not only just cuts from a battle, but twice. <laughs> it makes it makes us it's making me choke on this on this bitch, basically. Man, it's trying to make this it's trying to make me choke. And so you, you first it gets us all hyped and then it freaking just cuts away. Calm down, it's just only just a movie, I know. But it should not be doing that when you're a Godzilla film. You don't cut away your got your Godzilla fights. Twice. So even before they get to San Francisco, they're they get this try to get the nuclear uh, bomb on a train. Does it, it catches fire to the Mutos and Aaron Taylor jumps off the bridge. Then it falls back to San Francisco. Um then that's when they, you know, when they dive down, you, you see them kind of, them kind of fight each other, but it's too shaky when they're diving down, so you can barely see anything through the smoke. And then Godzilla falls, you know, gets his ass kicked. That's like, Godzilla, yeah, he gets beaten a little bit, but he does more than he did in this movie. Especially when he has Mothra's help as well, towards the end. But he does more in the sequel, you know. He does. He uses atomic breath more times, and then when he goes thermal nuclear, it completely obliterates King Ghidorah. Um. And then yeah, so then Ariel Johnson, they find the they go back, they find the bomb where it's a nest. It's in the middle of a nest because there's two mutos, right? Because a, a big a female is bigger than the male one. The, but Aaron Taylor Johnson, he one of those he lets, lets some gas leak, whatever, destroys the nest, and then when time comes, um, John, Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, when he's running with other guys, uh, then Godzilla uses atomic breath the first time, but it does nothing. Then he gets his ass kicked by the Mutos again. I Man, like Godzilla is very wimpy in this movie. Yeah, but then, but then in compared when this one, he does more fights in here than than this. Um, and then, then he, he kills the male Muto by just using his this tail whipping it, and he gets paled by a building, a piece of the building, kills that one, and then. The female Muto goes after Aaron Taylor Johnson and the other military man, and then he has a bomb on the boat on his own, and then and then Godzilla does the one the one badass moment where he grabs the Muto and uses a tom breath and shoves it down his throat. So then he does like the one the one badass moment of the movie, but that does still not save the movie yet because he was barely in the movie. And he gets his ass kicked more times, and then falls down, and does it for his atomic breath doesn't doesn't work at it does nothing at first. <clears throat> but yeah, but he does the one badass thing in the movie was shoving it down the Muto's uh, throat with his atomic breath. Then afterwards. <clears throat> And then afterwards, Aaron Taylor Johnson reunited with his wife. And that's when Godzilla returns back to the sea. And I guess now, because during that time, if you know, it's during the if you know, it's during the end of San, at the San Francisco week before as soon as he returns to the sea, this is when he have the opening happening with um, Kyle Chandler and Vera Farmiga, you know, with her with their one with her daughter searching for their dead son. So during that time. That fight in San Francisco when just as Godzilla is returning to the sea, you have the opening of this. When Kyle Chandler and Vera Farmiga they see Godzilla walking towards the ocean after the big after the fight in San Francisco because they were in San Francisco. So that you have that opening happening during that ending of the first movie. 
So... This is the Godzilla. This is the Godzilla fans have been waiting. This is the Godzilla fan. This is the Godzilla fans have been waiting for. So this is what this is what I've been waiting for uh, when I finally this, when this came out. So we waited for a boring, long drag out two hour movie with barely no Godzilla in it, and he's in for like five minutes at most, and most time he gets gets his ass kicked, but he, gets, but he does the one badass uh, moment. Because most of us focus on all these boring characters, these human characters. Although I like Ken Watanabe, but like I said, he's not that much to do in this movie, but he does more in the sequel, which I give him more praise for in the sequel. And I said it before. Aaron Taylor Johnson sucked in this movie. He was a boring ass lead. Elizabeth Olsen, uh, I'm sorry, she did nothing for me in this movie either. Them, as I said, they, they do better both together in Age of Ultron. Um, who else? David Strathern, I like, though. But even though he was in it, even though he, but he's in it less in the sequel, though, so. More, more I can say for David Strathern. I like David Strathern, but. Didn't impress me, sadly. And Ken Watanabe, like I said, he does more in the sequel, though, here than in here. Um, like I said, Brian Cranston. Best part of the movie of the human characters who showed emotion. You felt sorry for his for after losing it after he's forced. You know what happened with his wife. But then he stupidly get dies on a freaking bridge. <laughs> on a freaking bridge. Well, he, we died like that, but he fell on, from a bridge. It reminds me of the stupid scene of what happened to Captain Kirk. Died on a bridge. <laughs> Don't ever be reminded of that. I just I, w I wish I wish it was Aaron Taylor Johnson who got killed and not Brian Cranston because otherwise that would give him more motivation. Goes oh he lost his wife and he lost his son. That would give him more motivation to, to to stop to stop what happened to the, stop what happened. So and the, and yet he dies before Godzilla entered the picture and his character never got to see Godzilla. Best character with emotion, best character of the movie with dialogue. And yet he dies. It's like, oh, this character is really good, you know, how he sold his performance. Let's just kill him off. And live with a, a boring lead who's a blank face, total piece of uh piece of wood of uh lead Aaron Taylor Johnson. And yet their last names are supposed to reference, you know, Brody's, you know, from Jaws. And this film gets a seven, gets a seven, gets a seventy-five percent Rotten Tomatoes, while King of the Monsters gets what, like a thirty-some percent Rotten Tomatoes. But the sequel has more has a lot more going for. It. I thought the sequel was more because the director Michael Dowry, the director of Trick or Tree, he had more passion to this project, and the, I thought the visuals were much more better. Although the visuals are good in this film, but I thought it was much more improved in the sequel. He was much more passionate about this project. Here I felt no passion, such as this directed by Gareth Edwards, who will later go on to direct Rogue One, a Star Wars story, which I hated. I hate, I hate Rogue One, a Star Wars story. It was a pointless story to tell. But here was I thought it was the pace was much more faster. The human characters I liked more, like Kyle Chandler, Charles Dance, I, even uh, Millie Bobby Brown who plays the daughter Madison. I, I liked her. Ken Watanabe, like Ken Watanabe, he was given more due, especially that great moment when he when he self sacrificed himself with that great score by Bear McCree. The score was much better than Alexander Gosplat. And because even the even the composer Bear McCree had more passion uh, of doing the score for this, and then because you get the little bits of you know of retooled versions of uh, some of the older ones of the scores, you know, and I and as such I love the reversion mix of got of Blue Oyster Cold's Godzilla. The original is a classic, yes, still, but I I of uh, uh, but I really loved how they did the re a re a reversion retooling of Godzilla. Whoa, no! 
They say he's got to go, 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 Godzilla. Oh. That was the be- to me. That was the best song I've heard in 2019. I, I can't praise that song more enough. Yeah, this is more of a passion. Here, I felt no passion in this. So yeah, this is to me. This is a huge improvement or a step up than the previous film did. And yeah, this film underperformed. Weak opening, lower uh, total than the previous film did. I mean, the, that film what carried about 530 some million. This made about 385 million. Why? And here, like, especially with Godzilla, at the moment when, when uh, um, we th- 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 completely obliterated uh, King Ghidorah by going through nuclear, and yet all and all the monsters, including Rodan, bowing down before him. So, and I like Kong Skull Island. I, do, I like Kong Skull Island better than the twenty than this. I just hope that I just hope that Godzilla vs. King Kong doesn't disappoint. I just hope it doesn't. <laughs> So, but, I, but I'm also skeptical because it's directed by Adam Wingard. So, which this, this is which uh, the Adam Wingard? He's this is the guy who directed that Blair Witch sequel, the she Blair Witch sequel, and um, you're next. I didn't care for either. And oh, well, he well, he directed the the um um live action adaptation of Death Note, though, which I've not yet seen still, but I've heard bad things about it though. But yeah, he directed a shitty Blair Witch sequel called Blair Witch. Your next, I did not like. So I, I'm, I'm just hoping that Teal doesn't keep. I'm just even given a slim of hope that he, he does not disappoint with this Godzilla vs King Kong. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Maybe because or otherwise, she just got or otherwise she got a different director. But. I'm going with open, open uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for a trailer for that. It should be coming out with, I would say, within a couple months, maybe. I'll, well, I'll wait for a trailer, then I'll judge it on that. So, but that's going to wait till another time. But this film, <clears throat> with this film, yeah, I, I want to like this badly, but I lie to myself. I ever, I ever rarely just go and do that though but just this is just beyond disappointing for me which I'm glad the sequel was an improvement for me this sequel is not loved by everybody that's your opinion though but I enjoyed the sequel more <sighs> boring two hours more uh, barely no Godzilla and more of these boring characters except for Brian Cranston you get some good vision. You get some good visuals. That one badass moment with Godzilla. Um, but that's that's it though. This film is just yeah. I just don't get it. Now you see why I. It's a. As a, as a fan who grew up with Godzilla, I want to like this a lot. But like I said, I just freaking less I lie to myself. But yeah, this film... Miles better. Better? I mean, yeah, people still hate this look, though. I never... I never was never bothered by this look of Godzilla. Growing up, it never, it never bothered me. I To me, I like this look... Yeah, I know, but it's not. It's, this look is not loved by everybody. Well, probably not loved by. Probably nobody likes this design now, still. But I still like it. Yeah, I still know it's not the best looking. The original is always is better. Yeah, but I never minded that look though. But one of my all-time favorites. I still enjoy this film. Love this film to death still this day. Highly underrated in my opinion. Deserves more love and respect. So, but I have already, I've already said about this about three times. I did two. I revisited this film two times already. So you already know my thoughts on this. But still, miles better. This is just trash. But this, 
I give it a thumbs up four. So I just hope that the Kong versus Godzilla versus King of Kong doesn't disappoint. But wait for a trailer and just I just hope that Adam Wingard does not disappoint. Otherwise, I'll be going after him like I did with Gareth Edwards. I hate Rogue One, a Star Wars story. I don't like this film. Dis beyond disappoint, one of the most dis one of the most disappointing films I've seen in my life. Now, if I had made a list, I'd probably put this up up there. But I'm glad this this film to me was an improvement. Go go Godzilla! And I still and I still love that song. But wait, you but that's my that's my. My ranting thoughts on the 2014, which I wanted to do so, because I reviewed the sequel before, but I wanted to, I did that just to get away from my, one of my favorites of 2019, so. I said I'll review the, the, the previous one, and here it is. <sighs> but if you like the film, that's, and you, that's your opinion, more power to you. I will just disagree, I will understand it though, but I am not disrespectful though. If you like the film, good for you. I respect that. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for next movie review. Later.